this example, we're going to see how to configure and apply an event standard access list. Previously, we have seen a uh, number of the standard access list. Now, the difference between the two is very simple. An access list is made of uh, rules, of a, of a list of rules. If you, if you make a mistake of you, or you want to arrange rules or delete a specific rule, you have to delete the complete access list in a numbered standard access list. Whereas in a named standard access list, you can delete one rule without deleting the, uh, the complete access list. So we have this kind of flexibility which is available. So we're going to see how to configure a named standard access list. Now, since it is a standard access list, whether it is named or numbered, it needs to be configured and applied in a router which is closer to the destination network. Uh, we follow the same rules as what we have seen with the uh, numbered uh, standard access list. So, in this case, if I want to permit, if I want to uh, permit uh, uh, traffic from host three to host one and host two, I can do it. I can also deny traffic from host four to host one and host two. I can also do the same. Now, where I'm going to configure this uh, name and standard access list, it should be closer to the destination network, so it will be configured on RTA. So let's see how to configure that. First, go to RTA. Now, RTA, I need to launch the console, right? Let me just resize the window, console window, right? Here I am. Let me just uh, check if there is any access list already configured where I see there is an access list. So what I do, I just delete that uh, access list. So no IP access list uh, standard and the name is my ACL. So I, conf I disable or remove this access list from my router and then I configure a new one. Access list, it should be uh, a standard access list and I name it ACL1, ACL1. So this is my access list. Now in that access list, I would say permit all traffic from host three, 172.31.0.1 and deny all traffic from 172.31.0.2. In fact, when it comes to access list, we have the choice whether to specify this traffic if you want to know or if you want to see if there are matches against this route. We can do that. And we can type the command log. We have also the choice not to uh, configure this rule. We can leave it as it is uh, because we would like to benefit from the implicit deny at the end of any access list if there is no match with a specific rule on it. So I prefer, for example, to remove this rule. So no deny host 172.31.0.2. I will deny it. I will, re I will remove it actually from the access list. I will display now my access list. It contains only one rule, which is permitting, which consists of permitting traffic between from host uh, three to host one or host two, all of our traffic will be implicitly denied. So no need to add another rule and say deny from host four to host one and uh, two. That's fine. Now, where I'm going to apply this rule, I choose to apply it, for example, I can apply to serial interface one slash zero. But in the case where router RTA is connected to more than one Ethernet interface, for example, is using fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 or so on the other side. So that Texas rule needs to be connected. It's better to, to configure it on fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. But in this case, RTA is connected to single LAN, so we can configure it either on the serial interface 1 slash 0 or fast Ethernet 0 slash 0, but we have to choose the direction. If we configure it on this serial interface, it will be configured inbound. If uh, the access list is configured on a fast Ethernet interface 0 slash 0, so it will be configured in the, in the outbound direction. So let's do that. Let's configure it on the fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. 
I go back again to RTA, global configuration mode. I move to the fast Ethernet 0 slash 0, and then I will configure my access list, which is which I named ACL, my named access list actually, ACL, and it will be configured in the outbound direction. Let's check now if everything is okay. We will display the running configuration. So the running configuration says that there is one named access list ACL1 which is configured in the outbound direction. Let's have a look at this access list. Yeah, this is the access list ALC1. Well, ALC1. So it is better for me to come to correct this. It is ACL1. So what I do, IP access list standard alc1 right now i type ip access list standard acl1 and then i permit only the traffic generated from host 3 172 31 1 to reach any host on my network so let's double check again the configuration okay the access list is applied correctly right everything is fine let's display the access list right here it is now uh, I want to check I want to do test testing I will ping from host 3 to host 1 and from host 3 to host 2 normally there will be replies okay so let's do that right this is host 3 I will ping to 172.16.0.1. Yes, it is replying. I will ping to host 2. It is replying. That's fine. So my access list is responding correctly to the rules that I configured. All right. 10 matches, 10 matches. So each ping generates five ICMP packets. So since I ping it to from host 3 to host 1 and 2, so it generated 10 matches, which is fine. Let's now jump to host 4 and from there I will ping to host 1 and host 2 and see what happens. So host 4, right, I ping to 172.16.0.1. Well, what happens? Yes, an interval. Very good. So there is no connection or communication, let's say, between host 4 and host 1. And I will ping to host 2. Same thing. There is no communication. So it's like our firewall or the access list is blocking the traffic between host 4 and host 1 and host 4 and host 2. Let's just go back to RTA and see, right? Very good. Of course, we're not going to see the, uh, the matches because we are here, we are uh, relying on the implicit deny at the end of the access list. But in the case where you want to see the matches actually between for the deny uh, rule, what I can do, I simply go back and say IP access list standard ACL1. Okay, I go back to my uh, standard access list. So in the standard access list, uh, I can type uh, the rule. I can type a new rule which is deny host 172. Uh, 31.0.2 now I go back again show IP show access list show access list right you see deny is there deny has been added and it has been added at the uh, beginning of the access list okay there is no problem it's not a big problem for now uh, I go back to host 4 and from host 4, I will ping to host 2. It is unreachable, right? And I ping host 1. Still, it is unreachable, right? Now, I would like to check if how many matches I have on RTA. So, I display the access list. This is 16 matches, 16 matches, which means that those packets which have been denied are matched against the rule and they have been denied. So I can see exactly the number of matches. So in the case where you don't want to see the number of matches or if your rule is working 
how your rule is working, no need actually to uh, configure the deny at the end of the access list because you can rely simply on the implicit deny. But if you want to check or you want to test or you want to verify that your access list is configured correctly and it's working as you are expecting it, so it is better to configure a deny rule at the end of the access list. But well, in this case, it is it comes when I added the new rule in, the, in my access list, the new rule came at the uh, beginning of the access list. Uh, the iOS actually does not support uh, specifying the uh, entry number uh, because it's an old iOS, but in newer version of iOS, you can specify exactly where you want to add the new entry in your access list uh, by uh, adding an index number to your entry. Thank you for viewing this example. This is Hakim Adish. Bye.